This is Rock and Roll English. Real people, real English. Here's your host, Martin Johnson. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Rock and Roll English. Episode number 172, baby. Oh yeah. In today's episode, I speak to Corporal Coma. I bet maybe you're happy about that now, aren't you? I think at the beginning when he was on the show, everyone was like, oh, no, not Corporal Coma. But he's developed into an important player for Rock and Roll English now, hasn't he? Hats off to him. So hats off to him. Well done. As you know, Rock and Roll English is quite international. We have... Dan the Man in France, we have the Hellraiser in Uganda, we have Boom Boom Cannon in Sweden, me in Sicily, Substitute Sabrina in Rome, Clarification Charlie in England, and then there's Corporal Coma, whose mum's friend lives in Spain. So as he is an expert about everything Spanish, that is what we talk about, Spain. But remember, all of the rock and roll vocabulary from this episode is on the website, rockandrollenglish.com slash episode 172. And if you want a podcast every day, rockandrollenglish.com slash family. Here is the conversation. I will speak to you all again at the end. Happy listening. Corporal Coma, how are you today? I'm doing well, Martin, as always. Not going to ask me? That's generally what happens in these conversations. No, I'm not doing that anymore. Okay, well, don't ask me. I will tell you anyway, I am fantastic because I am always fantastic. Um, just to stop you there, for what, what people don't know is that we've just been chatting for 20 <laughs> minutes. So I know exactly how you are. <laughs> Straight with the no tease there for 20 minutes. Um, yes, we have been chatting for 20 minutes. Um, But a lot can change in the space of five seconds when I said, now we have to record the conversation. So you never know. You never know. Okay. That's a good point. Well done. Uh, Very good point, I would say. Um, Anyway, Corporal Coma, how do we usually start the show? We start with a review. Do you think we have a review? So last two times I've been correct. I'm going for a hat trick. And I'm going to say this week, no. So close to the hat-trick. Remember, a hat-trick is when you get like three goals. We have got a review, which I think this is the last one that I know of. So if you've sent me one and I haven't read it, let me know. And if you haven't left one, what are you doing? Leave one. Um, And it is from Mitsuyo Moto. Um, As always, apologies for the pronunciation. And it says, I would recommend this podcast to anyone who is learning English. It's not just worth listening in terms of natural English, but also because Martin and his friends are hilarious. She didn't say except Corporal Coma, but I think I think she wanted to. I think I'm reading between the lines. Then it says they always make me laugh. Always fantastic. Always fantastic. Just listen and you will see what a review. Thank you very much for that. Mitsuyo Moto, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's a good review, that. W- one of the best, one of the best. Um, anyway, Corporal Coma, do you know what we're talking about today? Nope, in our conversation beforehand, you didn't tell me. You, you didn't ask, you didn't ask. No, I didn't know. Well, I knew I was going to find out pretty soon. So. Well, exactly. Um, well, I must admit, I was a bit stuck for ideas. So I was racking my brain. So when you rack your brains, you really have to think, look in every part of your brain. And I was thinking, what could I talk about with Corporal Coma? What are some of his sort of characteristics? And then I thought, oh God, how did I forget this? His mum's friend lives in Spain, so he considers himself <laughs> Spanish. So let's talk about Spain. Espana. I mean, that is tenuous at best, but yeah. Um, so some rock and roll vocabulary there, tenuous, um, which has more than two syllables. So I'll leave that one to you, Corporal Coma. It's, it, it, there's not a strong link. Oh, there we go. Perfect. There's not a strong link. Um, well, you do have quite an affiliation with Spain, don't you? So an affiliation, kind of like a connection, let's say, because you got married there, didn't you? I did, yeah. I mean, I love Spain. It's a great country. Yeah, and obviously your mum's friend is from there. Uh, Well, lives there, sorry. In fact, when you got married there and I was telling people here, friends, I'm going to a wedding in Spain, they all said to me, oh, so is your friend Spanish? And I said, well, 
His mum's friend is, so... <laughs> well, she's not. She's from Essex as well, so... <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. She, his mum's friend lives in Spain. Yeah, yeah. Same but, as you live in Palermo, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Actually, she's got less... She's less Italian. <laughs> she's less Spanish than you are Italian. <laughs> but you, you still consider yourself, I think, maybe a third Spanish because of that, which is what I enjoy the most about it. Yeah. Um, Anyway, so I've got a few facts here about Spain. So we're just going to talk about the facts, baby. Um, as always, I've got these from a website. The credibility of the website maybe has a lot to be desired. So if you say it has a lot to be desired, you mean like mm, you're not really sure about it. Um, so fact number one is that Spain is the largest producer of olive oil in the world. What about that, Corporal Coma? I believe it. I mean, they grow a lot of olives. I'm surprised by that. I thought I was going to say us Italians, but I still don't think I'm there yet. I still don't no. think I'm there to say us Italians. Almost, but um, not quite. But I thought the Italians love, you know, olive oil. That's number one here. I think you uh, Italians are the biggest producer of wine in the world, though. Oh, it's a shame. Thing is, with olive oil these days, Corporal Coma, I get like the best stuff ever. Right? <laughs> I've got kind of like a drug dealer who hooks me up with some olive oil. So he hooks me up. He supplies me with it. You know, the shit that you probably drink in the supermarket. I wouldn't even <laughs> I wouldn't even clean my ass with. Oh, mate, we can get some good shit over here. Don't you worry about that. Oh, yeah. Well, I was very worried about that. I am very worried about that. But in comparison to the shit I get, mate. You need to know what to do with the olive oil. You know, stuff you cook with, stuff you put on salad. It's all yeah. different stuff. You can't you can't cook with, like, extra virgin olive oil. Well, luckily, Mrs. Rock and Roll English knows what to do with it, okay? You know? Yeah. So... You're, still having, you're still having chicken nuggets and chips. <laughs> I tell you, you can make some great chicken nuggets and chips with a nice bit of olive oil. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's you being classy. Just drizzle some olive oil on top of your turkey dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> so the turkey dinosaurs are the things that you get from the supermarket that turkey like dinosaurs, basically. But you did use some lovely rock and roll vocabulary when you said drizzle the olive oil on there. So just put a little bit on there, just, you know, like you might do with a salad or... Your turkey dinosaurs, both both are good for olive oil. Um, so another fact, this one's quite strange, but one I fully support. It is illegal to walk more than eight dogs in Madrid. So, you know, if you've got one dog, you can go out for a walk with your dog, two, three, more than eight, it's illegal. My first reaction was who would go out with more than eight dogs? Who goes out with 10 dogs? A professional dog walker. It's a real job. <laughs> I mean, can you call yourself a professional, though? Well, I mean, if you had eight dogs with you, one, you'd be going away from the dogs. <laughs> so you wouldn't be they'd be walking you. Well, that, and two, that's... you would you wouldn't be strong enough to to walk eight dogs, I, I, I suppose. Um, but it's illegal in Madrid. And I fully support that. Anyone that goes out with more than eight dogs should be arrested immediately. Um, so this one is quite interesting. You know, in england um when you're a child you lose a tooth and then in the night what happens corporal coma uh the tooth fairy comes and puts money under your pillow that you're sleeping in. you put your tooth under the pillow and when mm. you wake up in the morning it's been replaced with money yeah so the tooth fairy comes um and puts some money under there in spain apparently instead of a tooth fairy they have a mouse <laughs> um which is called rat Tonchito Perez. Um, I don't know what kids think about a mouse coming in their yeah. bed at night. You know, like a fairy. That's quite a nice thing that comes and, you know, takes your tooth and puts some money. <laughs> Could you imagine your parents just saying, don't worry in the night. You're going to have a couple of little mice running around your head. That's fine. But I, I suppose at what age do you stop believing in this this thing? So, I mean... A fairy, a mouse when you're four are probably about the same thing. <laughs> I still don't think so. I still I I've never liked mice, just like I've never liked dogs, okay? <laughs> Keep them No one likes no one likes mice. Well, apparently four year olds do. That's what you're saying. Well, I had a mate that used to have rats and they used to let them run over you when you're just sitting on the sofa. What who what friend is had rats and how have you never told me this? 
But my South African mate, you know the guy? Oh, my God. He actually had rats at home. Pet rats, yeah, yeah. They oh lived in a cage, and you'd get the rats out, and then they'd like, and they'd like sit on your neck and like chew on your hair. Fuck off! You have a, a fucking rat chew it, chewing on your hair. So when you chew, it's like when you eat food. You know, so a rat chewing my hair. I mean, my hair is so precious to me anyway. I don't let anyone. <laughs> well, I was going to say I don't let anyone chew my hair. I don't know why anyone would want to put my hair in their mouth, but especially a rat. Okay. Yeah, they were really cute. They're really clean. They're inside rats. They're not out. They're not sewer rats. They were inside rats. <laughs> really clean. Really clean. Those rats. Um. So when he said sewer rats, the sewers are the things like under the streets, basically, where the teenage, um, ninja mutant. I can't. What are they called? Teenage mutant ninja turtles. Mutant ninja turtles. Where they live. They live in the sewers. But that is absolutely disgusting. A rat. I, I'm. I'm I, not having that. So I'm not accepting it. Okay. I would. I would think. I would go as far as to say I would rather a dog chew my hair than than a rat. Um. Anyway, moving on swiftly. So swiftly, quickly. Um. The next fact I don't think will surprise you so much. Corporal Coma. Spain has the highest number of bars in all of Europe. So. In Italy, bars are considered what we would call like a cafe. But in, in English, a bar is where you go out and you drink and you basically get drunk. I'm not surprised by that just because of the amount of drunk English tourists that, <laughs> go, that go there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, most of those are Irish bars called O'Malley's or something <laughs> just catering to English people. And they just have like Sky Sports News on in English, like all day, 24 seven. I do feel oh, yeah. sorry for the Spanish people from those places, though, that have just been invaded by English louts. So a lout is someone that makes a lot of noise, drinks and just acts like a hooligan in a disgusting way. This is this is what's mental about it, because everyone over here, well, not everyone, but a proportion of people over here are really annoyed about foreign people being in England. But where my family friends live in Spain, everyone there is English or Irish. (laughs) There are no Spanish people there whatsoever. Like, literally, the street signs are in English. Every shop is English. The pubs are English. The only people that are Spanish are the police. (laughs) The street signs are in English. Well, there's no point being in Spanish because there's no Spanish people there. Well, I'm not surprised. All the Spanish people probably thought, well... I don't want to live here anymore because there's all these drunk English louts. Yeah. Well, it's not drunk. It's more like 65-year-old, leathery-skinned <laughs> English people that are just have just bought a house over there. Yeah. Um, just so people know, this like these people don't represent us, okay? Me no. and Corporal Coma, we're, we're cultured people, yeah? we If we go to a pub in another country, we... We don't make as much noise, okay? We, you know, we'll get drunk, sure, but just in a more civilised way, okay? Um, speaking of this kind of thing, though, kind of, um, apparently there is no law against public nudity in Spain. So you can just walk around the streets with it all hanging out, your balls, your penis, whatever you've got, just let it go free and you, you won't be arrested. There's no law. There's no law against that in England either. I'm pretty sure there is. No, you're not allowed to do anything sexual. But I mean, <laughs> if you if you were to just walk to your local shop with your cock and balls out, <laughs> you can't get arrested for that. Well, I'm going to try it and see. And if I get arrested, you are going to look really stupid. <laughs> okay, sure. I will be getting arrested with my cock and balls out, but I will win this argument. So it will be worth it. Yeah, you're allowed to. It's you're not allowed to enrage public indecency, something like that, which means that you're not allowed to do. If you offend people with your nudity, <laughs> then they can complain. So, you know, I'm walking around with my cock and balls out, and someone might just say, "You know what? That cock offends me." So then I'll be yeah. arrested, won't I? But if everyone's laughing at you, which would probably be the reality, <laughs> then. You'd be fine. Everyone would just be like, huh? And the, no, the police couldn't arrest you. No one will be laughing, Coma. Everyone will be looking, thinking, wow, now that is a man. That is a real man. 
I mean, I think this is going to be the third podcast in a row where we've talked about seeing each other gen- each other's genitals. And I wasn't talking yeah. about yours, Kamer. I was talking about mine. Okay, I was talking about mine this time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. So apparently, the um, there are nude beaches as well, nudist beaches, and it's famous for that. And I honestly, this is the God's honest truth. Notice that little term there. It's quite easy to understand. But the God's honest truth is I would love to go to a nudist beach just once just to see what it's like and just to walk around, you know, with it all out like Adam and Eve from the Bible, like God intended it. I might do the thing that they did in the Bible and put some like leaves on my penis or something like that (laughs) so it doesn't get sunburnt. (laughs) I mean, what's the point of being nude then? Well, you know, just, so just, just when I'm lying, see what you got. just when I'm sunbathing, I might just put a little leaf on it. Um, but just to get in the sea naked will be an amazing feeling. Have you ever been to a nudist beach, Coma? I haven't, and I would like to go as well. But I was actually reading an autobiography from someone recent. Well, I was on holiday a couple of weeks. The ago. autobiography of the person that went to nudist beaches. No, no, no. It's uh, it's uh, you know Jeremy from Peep Show. So this okay. obviously that doesn't translate to. People yeah, from other that's, that's a TV program in Britain, yeah. Yeah. And he said he did exactly the same thing. He was like, oh, I really want to go to this nudist beach. Like, I've never been before. It seems quite liberating. He was on his own, went down there, put his towel down, whipped his pants off. Within about 30 seconds, a bloke had like, put their towel next to him and was just trying it on with him. <laughs> and then he looked around and there was absolutely no other women on the beach. And let's be honest, we're going to the nudist beach because we kind of wanted to see some women without their pants on. <laughs> and it was just men and they were just trying it on with him. So when you try it on with someone, you try to start a romantic relationship, let's say. Um, some nice other rock and roll vocabulary when you said he whipped his pants off. So he took them off really quickly. I don't know. It still sounds fun. Maybe me and you can go together, Corporal Coma. Mm, yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm up for it. I don't mind. Yeah. Let's do it, baby. Um, the next one here is, mm, I don't know, it's a bit of a strange one because it says enjoying life is a big part of Spanish culture. I would hope that was a big part of all cultures, but I, I don't know if it's a big part of culture in the UK. What do you think, Coma? It's definitely not part of your culture. <laughs> Be, being disappointed continually with life is part of your culture. I'm always fantastic, mate. Okay, I'm I live life to the max. So if you live life to the max, you live it to the full. I thought always fantastic was ironic. No, mate, no, not anymore. I'm a I'm a new man. Okay, I'm a changed man. Okay, you know the old me, Corporal Comus. <laughs> oh, baby, a lot can change. A lot can change. Um, So in the whole uh, Spanish culture with the enjoying life thing, they have a saying, which, excuse my Spanish pronunciation, but it's like manana, manana. Manana. Manana, sure. (laughs) Manana. I forgot Corporal Coma knows. He's Spanish, isn't he? His mum's friends from Spain. (laughs) I mean, that's everyone knows what manana means. I I, I don't. What does it mean? Tomorrow. Oh, fuck. He does know. Uh, Apparently it means, yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow, which they basically mean is like... No stress. So I imagine if someone's worrying, they just say, manana, manana. Manana. Do it properly. (laughs) Manana, manana. Manana. Jesus Christ. Look, stop fucking breaking my balls, okay? I'm concentrating on Italian. That's hard enough for me. Just because you know one word in Spanish. I know loads of words in Spanish. I bet you know how the word for beer, don't you? (laughs) Cerveza. <laughs> I love the way you did that with your, like, your tongue. Like, so, so, so. <laughs> yeah, you look like an idiot. If you just go, oh, can I have a cerveza? You look like a right idiot. So tell me how you order a beer then. Uh, una cerveza, por favor. Oh, God, you actually sound Spanish. I'm, I'm pretty impressed by that. What other things can you say in Spanish? I can order wine. <laughs> Uh, things that don't involve ordering alcoholic drinks, I'm interested in. Oh, no. I, I'm, I'm all out. <laughs> exactly what I thought. Um, so one more thing here, which, again, is a bit contentious, so we're not really sure about it, I suppose, um, is they say Christopher Columbus was Spanish. So the guy that discovered America... Um, I must admit, I always thought he was English until he, until I came to Italy. 
And then I realised that's not the case, mainly because of the name, because I thought Christopher Columbus, that sounds English. So when I was young, I thought, well, he must be English. His name's Christopher Columbus. But then in Italian, it's, it's changed. It, they have it in the Italian way. Yeah, but I mean... But I don't know why we can't translate a name. How difficult is it just to translate that to like, well, we'd say it with an English pronunciation, but like Christopher Columbo. Why do we have to translate the name? Because... Yeah, I mean, I, I get your point, but he, he, he wouldn't a, have been called... His friends wouldn't have called him Christopher Columbus. <laughs> exactly, but it, the, the name's been translated. I find this strange. Italian people Well, for translate. America, wasn't it? It's obviously for America. Well, I, I, I don't know where it's from, but I find the whole thing strange. For example, Italian people translate the names of the English royal family. That, Like, for example, Queen Elizabeth is called Elisabetta like Prince Charles is called like Principe Carlo and I just think <laughs> can you not say Charles like how how difficult is that it's a very strange and the same as cities like the big cities yeah are translated say, yeah. if you think so Venice Venice in Italy or in Italian is Venezia so that's translated but then if you go to the small cities, I mean, even like Palermo, people just say, oh, fuck. And we, we can't think of a name for that one. Let's just call it the <laughs> Italian one. But why can't you do that for everything? It's a lot of hassle, isn't it? And also, like, it's, you know, Venice, Rome, Milan, people are going there from England. Not many people are going to Palermo that much. <laughs> Uh, true, uh, but I, yeah, I find the whole thing strange. Even this is a great example: football team. So football, the team Roma, we say Roma, but the city we say Rome. How about that? Yeah, no, no, no. I do. I, I, I it is weird. I, it's one of the weird things that I do actually agree with you on. It makes it makes no sense. One of life's unsolved mysteries. Um, anyway, I think that's probably enough of talking about Spain. Thank you for your Spanish input. It's like you're the Spanish correspondent of uh, Rock and Roll English. So correspondent, normally in the BBC, you have someone that works in Spain, reports to the BBC. That's what you do for Rock and Roll English, Corporal Coma. Well, if all I had to do was order a beer or two <laughs> white wines, then yes, I, I could smash that job. Fantastic. Thank you very much for your time, Corporal Coma. Enjoyed it. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, so that was me talking to Corporal Coma about Spain. Um, so let's have a look at some of that rock and roll vocabulary. At the beginning of the episode, I said hats off to Corporal Coma. Um, so when you say that hats off, you take your hat off, let's say, and it's a sign of respect to say well done. Um, he used the term hat trick as well when he wanted to get three right um, because that comes from the football term of scoring three goals, which is scoring a hat trick. Then I said I was having difficulty of things to talk about, so I was racking my brain. So when you rack your brains, you're looking in every part of your brains to find a solution. And in the end, I did talk about Spain. Um, and then Corporal Coma said that it was a tenuous link. So tenuous link between talking about Spain because his mum's friend lives in Spain. So there wasn't a strong link. Um, but then we also had the word affiliation when I said to Corporal Coma he has this affiliation with Spain because he got married there. His mum's friend lives there. He thinks he's half Spanish. He can order a beer in Spanish. Um, so he has this strong link with Spain, a strong affiliation. Um, then we were talking about the credibility of the website. And I said it has a lot to be desired. So if something has a lot to be desired, it's not the best. OK, it's definitely not the best. Um, then I was talking about my drug dealer who hooks me up with olive oil so when someone hooks you up they can find it for you usually it might even be something illegal um, I mean olive oil is not illegal um, just so you know but he supplies it for me so he hooks me up then we were talking about olive oil um, and Corporal Coma said that you can just drizzle it on your turkey dinosaurs um, so when you drizzle something um, it's just when you just put a little bit on it that term is also used for rain in England the very famous rain that you get in England it's just drizzle you know that really light rain it's not even worth using an umbrella sometimes because it's just 
drizzling. Um, then we had the word chew when Corporal Kaima was telling us about rats that chew your hair. So when you put food in your mouth, it doesn't go directly to your stomach because in your mouth you have to chew it and then it can go into your stomach. There's some nice science for you. Not sure if it counts as science, but I do my best. And um, we had the term sewer when Corporal Comer said they are not sewer rats. So the sewers are the things under the street, basically. As I said, where the teenage mutant ninja turtles live. I have a lot of difficulty saying that. I don't know. It's like a tongue twister. Teenage mutant ninja turtles. Anyway, that's me talking to myself. Um, I then said, no, I'm not having that when Corporal Comer was saying, oh, they're, you know, they're pets, these rats. So I'm not accepting it. Absolutely not. Then I said, moving on swiftly from talking about the rats. So swiftly, quickly. You can say he left very swiftly. We were then talking about English louts. So a lout um, is a slang word in England, but it's one of those disgusting English people that you see that is always drunk and is just generally disgusting. They might have a tattoo of the English flag or something like that. Um, then we were talking about nudist beaches and I said that I wanted to go. I said, this is the God's honest truth. You probably understand that. In fact, I know you understand that, but it's just a nice term to use. Instead of just saying this is the truth, you can say this is the God's honest truth and you will be much cooler. Um, then Corporal Comer was telling us about the nudist speech and said someone whipped off their pants and tried it on with him. So when you whip off your pants, you take them off very quickly. And if you try it on with someone, you try basically to bring them to bed. Um, I then said I live life to the max, so to the maximum. Um, then we were talking about Christopher Columbus, which I said is a bit contentious because it says that he's Spanish, but I'm pretty sure he's Italian. So it's a bit contentious. It's not really accepted. People might fight over this. Then we were talking about Corporal Coma being the Spanish correspondent. So as we said, a correspondent maybe for the BBC works in Spain and then gives us all the news about Spain. Very much like Corporal Coma. Um, anyway, remember all of this rock and roll vocabulary is on the website rockandrollenglish.com slash episode 172. I will see you all again next week, people. But in the meantime, just keep on rocking, baby. Thanks so much for listening to Rock and Roll English. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit rockandrollenglish.com and facebook.com slash rockandrollenglish. We'll catch you next time.